We teach history very well in business schools. What we don't teach is the future. The models we had that explained our reality, that said, if you pull this, this happens, those have kind of evaporated. The world we work in, the way we help people, it's constantly evolving. What was the right solution yesterday or last week is unlikely to be the best way forward at some point in the future. Today is going to be thought-provoking. People will walk out and think slightly differently to the way they did when they walked in. What we really want our clients to do in this day is to understand what TOI really is offering and to hopefully understand that we are trying to go to the next step. Am I really looking at strategy in the right way or am I playing in it? We are in distinguished company and I'll hand you over to Gordon. Thank you, very Thank you Gordon. Thank you. I told them at the beginning I was going to try and achieve two or three objectives. First of all, make the subject interesting. It would be sort of compelling in terms of the, the ideas. Look at markets with two properties. One is they move quickly. And the pattern of behavior can change that just eradicates your strategy in two seconds. And it happens because in the scientific definition of complexity, sometimes things get connected. The agents in the system interact with each other, ricochets, you know what I mean, take place. And the whole thing can move outside the boundaries of the model you thought was determining the system. It was fascinating and thought-provoking and scary all rolled into one, really. You like to think you're doing well and that your business is, is successful, but how long will it be so? And, and the, the people that you look at, like the Sonys and whoever the world, that maybe hadn't uh, the success that you were expecting of them. I mean, they were great people doing great things. So, you know, it could happen to you. So you have to think about it. So. It goes to the heart of the kind of decisions we make as leaders about thinking about our industry, our competition, what value creation is all about, how you get ahead. The real heart of what does it mean to be competitive as an enterprise in today's world. It actually made me stop and think about what I do in my industry in banking, about how we need, again, to reevaluate and look to the future to find that sort of Apple iPod moment. And I was surprised to find myself thinking that after 30 years in financial services, that I'm actually in more of the traditional orthodox camp in terms of thinking and really need to sort of take a fresh look at some of the things that Professor Hewitt put to us today. Until two months ago, Nokia had the largest manufacturing global share of telephonic handsets in the world. But the telephonic market grew very quickly from phones to smart connectedness. So here's an interesting question for starters. Under what circumstances does market share, that important metric, not become a good measure of market influence? What I really liked was some input from Gordon, some really challenging ideas and then an opportunity to discuss that round the table with colleagues and get those different perspectives. Many of them were saying, we don't talk like this enough inside our company. You know, it's nice to come outside and do it. Gordon always stimulates your thinking. We've had real value uh, enhancing strategies by him testing it, poking it, saying, look, that's the old thinking. Who could take you out of the business and make you think about what tomorrow's world is going to be as opposed to an extrapolation of today's world? We're so tied down in processes the brain isn't free to start doing thinking. There are only three types of agents in a complex dynamic system. Those that make things happen, those that watch things happen, those that wonder what the heck happened. The question is which one are you in? And how would you know? And when will you know? <laughs>